In this lesson, we'll learn how to answer a question involving heat flow through copper and steel rods. The question reads, two rods with a cross section of 4.0 centimeters squared are connected together. The copper rod has a length of 1.2 meters, while the steel rod has a length of 1.0 meters. Their opposite ends are held 100 degrees Celsius and 0 degrees Celsius as shown below. What is the flow and the temperature of the junction at equilibrium? And we've been given the thermal conductivity for copper, that's a constant K, and for steel being 50 watts per meters times degrees Celsius. To answer this question successfully, we have to refer back to the heat flow formula shown below. In a previous video, I thoroughly explained what each variable represents, but I'll discuss what they mean again as we do the calculation. So what they're asking us to find is the heat flow along the two rods and the final temperature of the junction at equilibrium. Equilibrium is an important word here because what it's suggesting is that the heat flow will be the same throughout the entire length of the two rods combined, being 2.2 meters. Let me mark down some important numbers on the diagram. Since we're dealing with the change in temperature from this formula, the initial temperature here, which I'll represent as T sub I, is equal to 100. And the final temperature over here, we don't know. So I'll set it equal to capital T. The initial temperature over here is zero. And the final temperature over here, which they both share, is unknown. So what I will do is calculate the heat flow for the copper and the heat flow for the steel. And make them both equal to each other because it is at equilibrium. The heat flow is going to be the same throughout the entire rod length. Here's what I mean. So starting off with copper, H sub Cu, the heat flow for copper, is the value for K, that's the thermal conductivity being 380 watts per meters times degree Celsius. Multiply to the area, or the cross-sectional area here, being 4.0 centimeters squared. Multiply to the change in temperature. The change in temperature is based off the final temperature minus the initial temperature. The final temperature is something we don't know, minus the initial being 100 degrees Celsius at this end, divided by the length of the copper being 1.2 meters. I'll do the exact same thing for the steel. Before I proceed, I just want to show you that the constant is different because we're dealing with steel here, and over here it's copper. The area is the same, but the expression for the difference in temperature is a little different. Notice that we have T minus zero as opposed to T minus 100 over one meter in length. The next thing that I'll do, since the heat flow is the same, is set these two expressions equal to one another. And in order for us to get the correct T value, since the copper is the one that is transferring its heat over to the steel, to solve this correctly and to get a value of T that's less than 100, we have to set this H value equal to negative. So just bear that in mind when solving these types of problems. The substance that's transferring the heat, since we don't know the final temperature here, set it equal to negative. Whereas the one that's receiving that heat, in this case the steel being the colder of the two, leave it as positive. All right, I'll divide both sides by negative so that the negative is not on the left side but on the right side. Here we go. So this expression is equal to that expression. Now normally what I would do next is make sure that the units for the area correspond to those of the constant being in meters. Right now they're centimeters squared and this is in meters. But because both rods have the same cross-sectional area, they're going to cancel out anyways. So you don't have that headache of having to convert to meters squared. We need to solve for T to isolate for it. So I'll employ the cross multiplication technique for solving. That way we get rid of the fractions and you should end up with one times this expression, and since it's one, we don't need to write it down. I'll just rewrite this part. And I know that the final temperature is going to be in degrees Celsius, so I'm going to omit the units moving forward as I solve this. 1.2 times that expression. All right, we're getting close. So this part becomes 1.2 times 50. That's 60 T. And over here, I'll expand negative 380 T plus 
Negative and negative make a positive. 38,000. I'll bring that t over, that term, 60t plus 380t. Combining these two, we get 440t. Then dividing both sides by 440 should give us our answer. So 38,000 divided by 440 makes 86 degrees. So that is the final temperature at the junction. Now we're not done answering, we still need to find the heat flow. That's very simple. All you have to do is take this value and substitute it into either one of these equations. You can substitute it into here or into there, preferably this one because it's simpler to work with. And you should end up with a heat flow that is equal to 1.8 watts. 1.8 watts is the heat flow all throughout the length of these two rods. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. But otherwise, that is how to find the heat flow through copper and steel rods.